<laughs> Are you trying to find the good light? Yeah, I'm it? trying to get out of this weird <laughs> <laughs> See, this is the danger of doing things like this. You're just like looking at yourself like, is it okay? It's not okay. What you I, right, right? I think it's unavoidable. Tell me, is this good? Greetings. I am Tessa Thompson. And I'm Namdi Asamoa. And this is... The first time. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember listening to all the songs that were in the script. My band's playing tonight at nine if you want to come. I've never met a girl who knows much about music as you do. <laughs> so it felt like a very, like a musical experience of, of reading the script. Did you read it and like pause every time a song came up and then you I would it? I would pause it, play the song and then continue reading with the song. So I really remember, I remember it musically actually, which, which makes sense because I feel like the film is partially a love letter to, to music and the way it brings us together quite literally sometimes. The first time I read the script for Sylvie's Love, I was on an airplane, I, I was headed to New York um, I get all my work done on plane, so it's the best time for something to come in. And I got it, I read it, um, and I think by the next morning I was on the phone with the writer and director, Eugene, telling him how much I loved it and how much I wanted to be a part of it. I sang in the choir in high school, and then before that, I uh, in the fifth grade, we did a production of West Side Story, and I, <laughs> and I played Maria. And my family will never let me live it down because I have this speech and Maria, she, at the end of it, she's like, this will be the most wonderful night. And then I did a bunch of spins and I spun right into the curtain. And we have that on a family video. So that, <laughs> that's probably my first. And then later I sang in a band. And then more recently, I've got to perform music in the Creed films. But I'll never live down that uh, spinning right into the curtain moment. I like kind of teetered, lost my balance, like face planted into the curtain, but I didn't fall. I had an acting coach. She helped me out on this film that I did called Crown Heights. You got your family, you got your life. Why are you still wasting your time on me? It's not just about you. I mean, it was just an amazing experience working with her. And she ended up getting cancer and she passed away right before we uh, premiered the film. So she never got to see Crown Heights, which, you know, breaks my heart. And I went to her funeral. There was a guy that got up and he had a saxophone and he played someone to watch over me at her funeral. I was like, that was great. Left it alone. I get this script. And I see that Robert plays the saxophone and somehow, and I think she talks to me all the time, somehow that moment and that image came to mind. And so I reached out to her family, got his information, sent him the script. And he said, I will teach you how to play the saxophone. You have to perfect this for the film. And so in a weird way, you know, I kind of feel like her name's Eden Bernardi and I feel like Eden is still sort of working her magic through me in some sort of way. But that was the that was the moment where I really like went full force into the saxophone. I produced a film called Little Woods. Every day I'm with mom and she's dying and all I can do is get her some medication so it hurts less. You got something. Yeah, Oxy. And I met the the filmmaker when the script was a very different script at the Sundance Labs, which they do these labs where you get to shoot scenes and sort of develop and workshop the piece. And that filmmaker is Nia DaCosta. And we like instantly just had such a rapport. And I, the third day, I remember the third day being there drinking whiskey in this bar called the Owl Bar and her saying, will you make this movie with me when I make it? And I said, you better not make this movie without me. And then we just worked really hard to, to get the film made. And like Sylvie's Love, it wasn't an easy film. There weren't a lot of people clamoring to make this film, um, but it felt so special to me. So I'm happy to get to continue to do that and to do that with, you know, producers that are as passionate as Nambi is. <laughs> Thank you. So for me, the first time that I EP'd a film, that was Beasts of No Nation. 
All of you that have seen your family killed. You now have something that stands for you. I had just finished playing football and, you know, it was maybe five or six months later. And there was this project that I really loved and I really wanted to be a part of as an actor. And so I talked to the director and I talked to one of the lead producers and they said, we really want to go with people that actually are from Ghana. Like they're, they live in Ghana. We want it to be that specific, but we just completely hit it off. And so we would call each other for like weeks. And then finally um, the lead producer said, do you want to just shadow me on this and, and come on and, and help EP and, and bring the story to life? Cause we're, we're having trouble getting it made. I said, sure. I don't even know what that means, but I followed along and we went to Ghana. And so six months after I was finished in the NFL, I found myself in Ghana making a film and, and shadowing the director, Kerry Fukunaga, who was amazing. And, and Daniela Taplin, the producer, and, and, and making that movie. It was a great experience. Maybe Bambi. We made it, Mother! We... Mother! And it's so funny because when I saw the, the Lion King, when Mufasa dies, there was this kid in the theater. You just heard one little voice go, Dad? No. And no one, and no. clearly no one answered the the child because a minute later the the kid said, "Dead again," and oh. it was like such a. It brought me back to the time when you're a kid and you're watching these films and the and the you know the, a protagonist dies and thinking back to that some of those Disney films or these early cartoons you watch are the first time you're really processing death as a kid. But I remember that in Bambi. I remember being in the theater and being pretty distraught. Oh, you're going to break my heart with that story. Jeez. Dead? 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 <laughs> I'm going to hear that. <laughs> I hear it all the time. Whenever a character dies in something now, I'm always like, Dead? Yeah. <laughs> Dead? <laughs> oh, man. It's, that's heartbreaking. Um, so the first time that I, the second movie I ever saw was Boys in the Hood. It just goes on and on, you know. And I remember when I remember when Ricky dies at the end, spoiler alert, but I just remember like being in complete shock. It was the first time I ever saw someone die, get shot, they're killed. You know? So that was that was I know I know that that touched me. I don't know if I cried, but I'll tell you what recently got me emotional was have you ever seen this movie? We always go back to the animated films, but if, have you ever seen this movie Coco? So there's this moment at the end, I'm going to spoil the end for you, but the family is walking across this gold sort of bridge and the family was reunited and the, this little girl was older than sort of the father figure because he died so young and they finally got to be together and walk across and that's just, oh man. My father's a musician and so he has you know like musician friends somehow i ended up in a music video a brenda russell music video for a song called stop running away it was also by the way my very first kiss his name was Whoa. floyd his name was floyd the concept of the video is this married couple that were in duress and i think we played like the child version of them mm -hmm. um but we were doing kind of adult things and I got, I kissed Floyd. He was my first, my first crush, my first kiss. And also very apropos, very black love. Just me and Floyd, mm -hmm. two little black kids in this music video. It is baby Tessa. Yeah. I have pictures of me in a makeup trailer. I, I didn't know that I would go on to do this. It was just like a fun, <laughs> weird moment in time for me as a kid. Oh, that's great. Um, yeah, mine is not like, mine is really boring. I don't remember the exact moment, but I know because of football, I was basically watching myself on screen all the time, whether it's through like highlights or just certain plays or whatever, or interviews after a game. I'm talking about in high school, like they'll do the local TV channel and they'll interview a player after the game. And, um, so I remember that stuff. 
I was doing Shakespeare plays. I was really interested in classical theater. I thought maybe I would go to conservatory, but I didn't think I would pursue a career in, in acting, um, in TV and film. And then I honestly, I was so broke um, that someone suggested that I should interview. I had like all these odd jobs. I was like dancing at bar mitzvahs. I was waitressing at a Chinese restaurant. I, you know, I was teaching dance. I was doing all these things. And then I started, I, I just auditioned on a lark and, it kind of work begets work and it started to happen for me. And then I think one of my first experiences acting on screen and having a moment where I feel like I forgot that the camera existed. Um, that was a moment where I was like, Oh, I'd, I really, I'd like to do this for forever. I was in probably the middle of my career and, you know, I was doing a commercial as we, we do commercials from time to time. And I was doing one, I think I was in Houston, Texas. And we finished shooting and I went back to my trailer. I was getting ready to get on a plane and the director comes into the trailer and he says, Hey, you know, do you want to get a bite to eat? You know, just want to talk to you about uh, this business and everything. And I told him, no, I got to get on a plane. You know, I kind of <laughs> pushed him aside and uh, I got a call a couple of weeks later saying, look, I think you're really talented. Um, I get a lot of players that come in and do commercials and nothing happens, nothing comes from it, but I, there's a natural thing that you have. And I was like, oh, this is cool. And he said, you should really pursue it. A couple of weeks later, he says, hey, I want you to be on my show, Friday Night Lights. And I'm like, oh, my sister loves that show. Yeah, that, that'd be great. And I find out that, you know, this director is Peter Berg. He created Friday Night Lights. I start telling people this story and everyone's like, you got advice from Peter Berg. You got to, this is a calling, you know, that everybody's going crazy. And, and uh, you know, so I kept playing, but I knew that when I was done, someone said I was good. So let me try this avenue and see if it actually works. Um, so, yeah, I think that was the first moment where it was like, oh, this might be the next thing that I do. I still get starstruck. I don't know. I know you're supposed to be cool, but I remember... I don't know what car red carpet it was on, but I looked and like felt someone behind me and Meryl Streep was there and I just went, ah! <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ah, help! Um, then <coughs> also when I met Tilda Swinton, I was mm. shook. Um, she gave me a piece of pizza. I, I was beside myself. Once I was Prince for Halloween, and I never got to meet Prince. I'm a massive Prince fan. And a friend of mine who is close with Prince sent a picture of me as him to Prince. And Prince wrote back saying, like, that I did a good job. And oh, I, that okay. was like a real moment for me, although it was not in person. So it doesn't really happen. So I don't really get, like, starstruck. But I'll tell you this. I was doing a play called Good Grief at the Vineyard Theater in New York. So it's an off-Broadway play. And I had finished the show and every day you finish and the lobby is crowded with people and it's, but it's a small off-Broadway play, you know, maybe someone comes, maybe they don't. It's a random night, I think it's a Tuesday, the night when I really don't want anyone to come because you're warming up. Um, and I walk out into the lobby and there's Tessa. And she has on like this red something outfit and her hair is done in some sort of way. And I'm just like, what are you doing here? You know what I mean? It wasn't starstruck. It was like awestruck. Like one, why are you here? And two, why are you the most radiant person in the room? You know what I mean? Like, why are you glowing? And everyone's like, Tessa Thompson, Tessa Thompson. You know her? You know, leave me alone. <laughs> it's my home girl. Um, so that was like a cool moment. It's what came to mind. I was probably like maybe 15, maybe 15, 14. And I got really involved in my high school with doing um, AIDS education, with working around dispelling myths and stigma. And that was something that really mattered to me um, and then also did a lot of work in my high school there was a program that was developed by students there called racial harmony and it had to do with with 
different people of different races coming together and interrogating racism and calling it out in each other and in ourselves. Um, and that was something I think that really helped me in understanding how um, essential it is and how difficult it, be, it can be to build community and also to create sort of grassroots organization around an issue. So when I was in college, I went to Berkeley and there was a protest basically every day or every other day on campus. The black population on campus was, I think it was about 2.8%, if I'm getting that number right. And we protested. We were like, this, this number is too small, you know, let us in, we qualify. Um, we deserve to be recognized. And so, you know, for a couple of days, we wore all black. And, you know, black masks, black hats, black head to toe, you know, Black Panthers were Oakland, Berkeley. So we were just all black. We linked arms and we sort of did like a sit in where we we linked arms and we stood in front of the gate that gets you into campus. So not letting anyone come into campus. So they had to go around or find other ways. And it was big news. And um, yeah, everybody, it was great. Everybody was so shocked that a football player was a part of the group doing it because we tend to stay um, off to the side, but it was really, it was fun. Mm -hmm.